I guess it's, I should first recognize all uh, veterans that are in our crowd. I know that uh, some folks are fat, the family of some veterans are here, but if you're a veteran, would you please stand so we can give you the proper uh, accolades that you need. Thank you very much for your service. Well, good morning again, and God bless America. As we gather today to recognize those that uh, wore the cloth for our armed services, please know that we understand that all gave some and some gave all. I'm honored and humbled to be here before you to recognize those sacrifices so that we could be able to gather here in front of this glorious monument about for Colonel Shelter, Shelton on a glorious day the Lord has made. So let us be glad and let us rejoice. No, I did not serve. I come from a family that did serve. My father served and was awarded the Bronze Star in World War II. My grandfather, uh, my mom's from Belgium. She was a war bride and my grandfather was in the underground and was spent a little time where they didn't want to feed him very often and my uncle served in the service. So I've always had a, a great affinity for the armed services. But my way of serving has been able to try and put some of these folks back together after they've been to the war and have had limb loss. I'm fortunate enough and blessed enough to have had taken care of someone that participated in the Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, no one from Desert Storm, thank goodness, and Iraq and Afghanistan. And the stories and the triumphs, the sadness that each one of these folks have told me, and none greater than my friend Owen Mills, who was from out here in Whitesville, who just passed away just a little while ago. Most of them had the same story. They loved God, country, and the flag. But you know, at a time now, it seems like fewer and fewer younger folks are really participating in, in the um, recognition of those that have served. And, you know, I don't really blame them. I blame us. I blame their parents. Because they're going to do that stuff, you know. And at the same time, it's up to us to talk to them about the sacrifices, about things that mean so much to our country. I don't think you ever have to ask the Mullins that to celebrate a special Memorial Day because that Gold Star family is a Memorial Day every day. And, for, for, and they're a tremendous part of our family in Owensboro. Now Ronald Reagan had a quote in one of his Memorial Day services, freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We don't pass it on to our children in our bloodstream. It must be fought for and protected and handed on for them to do the same. Now, I'm certainly no Ronald Reagan, but somebody in this group will be able to keep the flame alive. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Find someone that does not know the story you know, they don't teach American history very much in school anymore, as I think they should, or maybe they do and I just don't understand it. And they don't teach civics. And you see these young people in tribes trying to gather themselves to go to a function. But I think it's up to us to teach them about what this is all about. So I ask you to pray for those that served. I ask you to take the time to thank a veteran for what they've done, because without them, we would not be here. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this morning, we get a privilege to uh, hear firsthand from somebody that certainly knows what Memorial Day means, and most of you probably know her. Uh, we're so blessed to be able to have their family here in our community. Uh, Kathy Mullins, if you join us.
thank you, Tim, for inviting me today. And I want to thank everyone here today for taking your time to observe Memorial Day. There are so many other places that all of us could be, and I know after this ceremony, many of you will be going on to spend time with your family and friends. In fact, uh, Memorial Day to our family always meant a camping trip. So um, to, before our sons enlisted, we honestly did not know what Memorial Day was other than the fact that my grandparents, my mom, we would all go, to, they would all go to the cemetery and we would just kind of stay home and have ice cream and chicken and all that. So um, thank you for being here today. Um, I might be preaching to the choir today, but just for the record, let me just reiterate that there are three holidays or days set aside each year to honor our veterans. Veterans Day, as you all know, is always in November, and it honors those who have already served, who have completed their service, who are now back in civilian life. Armed Forces Day is always the second week in May and honors those who are currently serving. Uh, right now, our family has two, have two members that are serving. And my husband, Tommy, is a veteran, so he falls in those two categories. Um, and then Memorial Day, which is today, is to honor those who have died while in service, those who did not return from the battlefield. For our family, Memorial Day was just simply that camping trip and time to get together. And um, in fact, right now, I, I, scrolling through Facebook, we've got several friends who are already on that vacation. We have friends in uh, Florida and other places, and, and I want to give a shout out to all of them. And to enjoy that time with your family and friends. Enjoy that freedom because it was paid for. But I do encourage you to take a moment to honor and remember. In the Gold Star community, uh, for those of you, many of you already know what a Gold Star family is. We've lost a son or daughter while on active duty. But in that community, there are a lot of other places I could have been today as well. I want to give a shout out to my friends who are at the Coca-Cola 600. We've got Sarah Taylor, whose son, Specialist David Taylor, was killed in Afghanistan. NASCAR is honoring her family today. Lori Sutherland, NASCAR is honoring her son Michael today. And Sonny Shabro whose son, Doug Green, served with Brandon, is also being honored at the Coca-Cola 600 today. And we're very, very honored that NASCAR takes the time to honor all the families of the fallen, not just those whose names are on the cars, but we do know that that represents the entire Armed Forces community. Some of you may know that I serve on the National Executive Board of the American Gold Star Mothers. And to be honest, I was not even supposed to be in town today. I was supposed to be in D.C. Uh, I had a whole list of things I was supposed to be doing, a lot of responsibilities and obligations that I could not fulfill um, because I, um, earlier this month I spent about a week in the hospital and I'm recovering now from a, a quite serious illness and it'll take me a few weeks and months to get over, but I'm so glad that you reached out to me, Tim, because you had no idea that I was supposed to be even in town. But um, I wanted to, uh, I always love to take the time to talk about our family, our story, our son Brandon. Uh, I want to give a shout out too to my friend. You know, I love the outdoors. Um, and uh, in Maine today, uh, my friend Lorna Harris is climbing, or she actually finished the climb yesterday to Mount Catardin in honor of the fallen heroes from Maine. They carry a stone up that mountain, and it's a pretty tough climb. So um, if, if I could be anywhere, that's where I would like to be, climbing that mountain and honoring Brandon on the, on the, on the peak of that mountain, because I know that view. So um, it's truly, truly amazing. Uh, two more of our friends, Jeff and Chris Hastings. In fact, Jeff was just here at this service two years ago. He and his son Logan, if you did not know, are on the Mississippi River kayaking the entire length of that river uh, to support the mission of their Warrior 180 Foundation in honor of all of the um, veterans who commit suicide. Um, those of you already, you probably already know, an average of 20 to 22 a day across this country succumb to their, their wounds from war. So a shout out to Jeff and Logan and Godspeed as they go down that Mississippi River. And you can follow their journey on Facebook um, or on their website. So since I'm not in D.C., I'm here with you. And I wondered, what can I tell these people? Because most of you guys already know our story. It's the same old Memorial Day message. You know, remember your family, enjoy your freedom, take time to remember. It's not really a happy Memorial Day for us. It's an observance. Um, so that's the message. However, I thought, what could I share that's new that, that some of you might not already know? Um, 
to be honest, it was a good thing I am home. My uh, this uh, just Saturday, Tommy uh, has been fishing all week long. Uh, he caught like 28 fish, 28 bass from from a lake over in uh, in uh, in uh, the next county over, and uh, we had a fish fry for our son-in-law on Saturday. Our son-in-law Stephen is currently serving in Korea, and that was his send-off. So I would have missed that. So in God's divine wisdom, he he kept me here at the house. And another thing that I would not have gotten to do. Um, so close to the holiday before all the rain set in was to go clean Brandon's marker. As some of you know, he is buried at the gardens and I spent Saturday morning kind of dusting it off and getting a little bit of mud off around the edges and placing some new flowers. I always take a toothbrush to kind of get the letters bright and shiny again. And, and uh, as I sat there on Saturday, I always trace the letters and it says specialist Brandon Scott Mullins, son, brother, friend, and his dates, January 1990 to August 2011, Bronze Star, Purple Heart, but also on that marker is the place where he died, Afghanistan. And I took a moment, the entire, all of the letters for that country are listed, Afghanistan, and it reminded me of that country. And um, I thought, wow, that's what I can share on Memorial Day. I can tell the story of Alaska. When Brandon was returned from, from, the, from the battlefield, um, he came here to Owensboro. However, he died in August. His comrades were not going to come back till the next year. They were still over there. They still had to serve. They had just lost one of their comrades. And they, months passed. And, but in May of the next year, they did return. They had a ceremonial uh, procession at Fort Wainwright, Alaska. And they invited all of the wounded warriors and the families of the fallen to attend that ceremony. So we got to go to Alaska. Um, on a side note, uh, that happened to be my husband and I, our 25th wedding anniversary. So we got to say thank you, Brandon, for a free trip to Alaska. He's always with us. Um, just a few weeks before that trip, though, um, we, we received a message from our pastor. Um, we were attending Bridgepoint Church, and our pastor reached out to us and said, um, we got this strange message for you guys. It's from a soldier who served with your son, and he was with Brandon on the battlefield during his last moments. As a mom, my heart sunk, it leaped, I was excited, I was scared. I thought, wow, he's going to have a few last words to share with us. And he wanted to connect with us somehow. He was stationed at Fort Bragg, and, um, but we said, hey, we're going to be in Alaska in Maine. He says, no way, I'm going to be there too. So this, he was the, um, in logistics there, he was with, in intelligence. And um, it's funny because he was stationed at Fort Bragg and our son Sean was stationed at Fort Bragg at the same time. So he met us in Alaska in May. 2012. And, you know, I was thinking, okay, what are Brandon's last words? Tell us what happened. You know, what, what can he share? What can he possibly share with us as we're in this grief that he was so desperate to reach out to us? Because he, he didn't contact us directly. He went through the pastor. So he knew that it was very sensitive and did not want to hurt, hurt us in any way. And we really, truly appreciate that. So, so we went to lunch and we went, it was an Italian restaurant and my memory might be a little different from, from my family's, but I do remember that the tablecloth was a piece of paper. And he, he reached into his jacket pocket and took a pen and he drew a map of Afghanistan where this, where Brandon spent his last few days. He drew the base, he drew the fields, he drew the villages, he drew um, several details, the roads. And um, some of you may know that Brandon was, uh, was in a convoy. He, there, were, there were five vehicles in that convoy. Brandon's vehicle was the third vehicle in that convoy. This, uh, this other soldier who happened to be in the region was driving at a different point on that same road. However, they were headed to the same destination. So he wasn't with him when, the, when it occurred. However, he was on the scene moments afterward. So that five-vehicle convoy, um, there were fields all around. Right, so it was an IED, and it was a detonated IED, and there was a Afghani person in that field who, when that convoy came, detonated it when Brandon's vehicle rolled over that. Brandon was in the vehicle that was an MRAP that was air-conditioned, and it usually would signify top brass or the commander. So, so instead of taking out the two vehicles in front, they took out the one that Brandon was in. So it was detonated. Now this soldier described all of this to us in Alaska at the, at the lunch table. And 
he said the radio went crazy. We, we heard there was an incident. We rushed to the scene. He happened to be with the surgeon that was on duty. So we had this guy in intelligence and this surgeon. So we had some, some commanding type people come right upon the scene for, for Brandon. They, um, he described what all happened moments afterward. Much to my, um, I was a little sad. He did not have any last words. However, uh, there was a sense of relief because Brandon did not suffer. Um, but that soldier, he didn't want to just tell us that part that happened. Because he was in intelligence, he wanted to be sure that we did not hold any anger in our hearts for the people of Afghanistan. To be honest, that is easy to do. I remember, the, I mean, several months had passed. I remember being in, uh, in Best Buy here in Owensboro and I saw someone of Middle Eastern descent and I, and I just remember feeling that, that rise of, of anger, you know, why, you know, why my son's gone, you know, and why are you even here? You know, what is up with that? And um, how can you even be here? And um, uh, so he wanted to make sure we didn't have anger in our hearts and him being in intelligence, he told us, he described everything to us. He described that he knew every single villager that lived close to that forward operating base. He knew every family. He knew every person. He knew every child. They keep track of all this over there. It's pretty amazing all of the intelligence that they gather. And um, he said it was a few weeks later, and they did find the person who detonated that vehicle, and they did take him out. So... You know, I don't know if you're happy for that or, you know, how do you feel? How do you process that? But he wanted to say that, that they actually went to the home of this, and actually it was a teenager in Afghanistan. And they met with that family because that's what they do in intelligence. They get to know the families. And the mother immediately broke down. She had lost a son. The father was in total denial. That's not my son. That's not my son. He did not do this. He could not have killed an American. You Americans are here to help us. So my point here is the point that he wanted us to know is that not only did we lose a soldier, we lost a son, we lost a child, but the people of Afghanistan did too. You got to know that that is the tactic of the enemy over there. They enlist by force the teenagers, the young people of Afghanistan to do their frontline dirty work because they do not care about their lives. This kid was, did not want to do it. He was a young kid. I, I, I imagine he didn't. He was forced. They would kill their families. They would kill their sisters, their brothers. It's a, it's a tyrannical place to live. It's really, it's, it's hard for us to process that. So, in us processing this, they lost a son, we lost a son. I'm tracing, I'm, at, I'm, in, I'm back, back here in Owensboro at the cemetery tracing Afghanistan. And then that reminded me of all the other people who have lost a son or daughter in the history of this great country. Over 200 years we've been here and thousands and thousands and thousands of mothers and fathers have lost their children. We're not alone. Here in Owensboro, there's just been a few, just a handful that are still left that have lost a son or daughter. We have nearly 100,000 people in this community and we were, just, uh, we were just talking just a moment ago, Mr. Condor and I, that most people do not have anyone in service. I mean, preaching to the choir right here, but um, uh, we are so far removed from that service and that sacrifice. So, I, can't, I, I think it's a testament to this great country. I do not know your politics. Um, however, I do know that Owensboro is home to over 56 nationalities. People from countries all over this world live here in Owensboro. They're our friends, they're our neighbors. 56 different countries call Owensboro home. Amazing. We had an event here at the River Park Center called Kentucky Remembers last Veterans Day, and we had a parade of nations, and 56 countries call Owensboro home. People want to come to America. Why do they want to come? Freedom. Brandon died for that freedom. All of these people died for this freedom. Our government, our leaders, they have to make decisions. How do we keep this freedom going? It isn't free. I'm so proud of Brandon. I'm so sorry that he's no longer here. But we are so, so very, very proud of his service and his sacrifice to this country. Both sides lose in war. Not too long ago, World War II, Japan was our enemy. However, many years have passed and I am so blessed to teach piano at the symphony and I had a student from Japan, Hidori Matori. Her and I, she was, she was older than me and we would play duets. 
So I have a friend from Japan here in, in, in America. Just, just a few weeks ago, I had a new student start up with me. He's 10 years old. He's from Vietnam. Not too long ago, they were our enemy. We have friends all over this great world. I would encourage you just to reach out and embrace those that, that are not from our, from, 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 not, not like us, who are us. We are, we are everyone. So, thank you for letting me share. Who am I? I'm just a mom from Kentucky, you know, who's lost a son, just small town, hometown hero. Um, what can I say to, to, make, to make this Memorial Day more special or more meaningful to you? I feel like Brandon has given me a voice. I have spoken and shared more since he's been gone than my, uh, you know, 40 plus years before. And um, I wanted to share a song with you. Um, a lot of us uh, Gold Star families, we just want you to remember our sons. We want you to say their names. We want you to remember Michael Cable. We want you to remember Brandon Mullins. We want you to remember Jimmy Harlan. We want you to remember David Taylor. However, 100 years from now, all of us, most all of our names are going to be forgotten. What are you going to do today to make this world a better place, to make this world more special? We live in the greatest country in the world. I, there is no doubt in my mind, people are fighting to get in here. We don't have enough room for everybody, but we want to share this freedom. So yes, that is why we go to these other countries. We want other countries to be free, to experience this amazing freedom that we have. So, a good friend of ours, Leighton Howerton, wrote a song. He's a musician from Nashville, and it's a, it's a very special song called Do Your Best. So, I would encourage you today to honor and remember those who have fallen. Share with your families what this day really means. Highlight this great country. Whatever you can do to make it better. And I promised myself I wasn't going to say this, Mayor Watson, but um, if I have to give you an extra $100 a year to make this city okay, I'm just going to do it, okay? It's all right. Uh, it's okay. I'm okay with that going to do my best and do my part because I'm so proud to be here. I'm so proud of my sons. I'm so proud of my husband. I'm so proud of all of you for serving and answering that call. So it's called Do Your Best. Long after we've died and gone to heaven and our children have followed us there, when our names have been forgotten and there's no one left to care, in this soil we've toiled and planted, others will reap the harvest there. Just do your best. When this day fades into history, whether the battle's lost or won, we'll be judged by our actions and how we've overcome. All these trials and tribulations, cursed by some and others blessed, just do your best. Do your best. For all who will follow, do your best. Joy is born out of sorrow, do your best. Face every struggle as a test, and just do your best. Just do your best. Thank you so much.
to uh, to finish up our ceremony today, uh, we're going to have a wreath laying ceremony. Mayor and and uh, Kathy are going to lay a wreath, followed by taps. Um, I'd like to recognize, thank you, Senator Bowen, for being here today. So many of our um, commissioners are here today. Thank you for uh, for being a part of this as we uh, we recognize our veterans today. Sheriff Kane are here. Thank some of our county commissioners as well. So thank you for being here today. Again, we'll have our wreath laying, followed by taps.